Ma un Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prastaya Bhutale Sri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaur Vani Pracharine Nirvishesha Sunyavari Pastyatya De Satarine Panchakalpa Tarubis Chakri Pasindu Pehavacha Patitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Hare Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Hare Rama Rama, Rama, Rama Hare Hare Okay. So um, yesterday we uh, we went through some verses from various Puranas uh, describing the appearance of Lord Chaitanya and. Um, We just uh, touched on a few. I'd like to, of course, this is what we're uh, building up to. Lord Chaitanya's appearance day is in less than three weeks. So from now until then, we'll keep as much classes as we can centered around Lord Chaitanya. For this, this day and yesterday, we will do, today also, we will do uh, verses from the Puranas describing Lord Chaitanya, which are interesting because it gives really a, a lot of authoritativeness to the appearance of Lord Chaitanya, it dispels a lot of misconceptions. It awakens the reality of Lord Chaitanya's appearance along with his mission by describing the symptoms that he carries with him along with the different aspects of his appearance, such as where he appears, who is his mother, So I would think I was thinking we continue reading from a few more of those Puranas today, and then uh, maybe if you have questions related to anything about Lord Chaitanya, it doesn't have to be connected to our talk today. So this one is from the Bhavishya Purana. This is this Purana is an interesting Purana. Uh, my uh, experience with the Bhavishya Purana, it is the most prophetic Purana that is available. It speaks a lot about upcoming avatars and saintly persons. It gives a very detailed description of Isha. Isha is actually Lord Christ. He is known as Isha, that's his actual name. Uh, and that's there in the Bhavishya Purana, along with statements regarding the appearance of Muhammad, like that. And so Bhavishya Purana is probably one of the most outstanding in the area of prophecy. So the Vedas, the Vedas are not simply somebody who wrote something down, they're actually uh, they transcend time, place, and circumstance. In other words, they're above the three modes of material nature. They can they predict things in the future. They describe things in the past, and they uh, uh, yeah. So along with what's happening in the present, pranas are. Shruti, Shmiti, Pranadi, Pancharatriki. So we find these are different sections of the Vedas. There's the Shrutis and the Shmirtis, which make up the Vedas mostly. And then the Puranas, also part of the Vedas. Pancharatriki is the uh, area of the Vedas. It's called actually Narada Pancharatrika. And that is the process of worshiping the Lord in his Archivigra home form 
we know it as deity worship. So uh, yeah, the Vedas are very vast in knowledge and very departmentalized in bringing about different topics. Mm -hmm. If you want to know medicine, it's there. If you want to know military science, it's there. If you want to know anything, Veda actually means knowledge. Vritti Veda. Veda actually means knowledge. And Veda also has another uh, synonymous term. It's called Shruti. Shruti means to be heard. So Vedas were transmitted by sound. So it's called Shruti. It's another term that applies to the Vedas. And the Vedas are not man-made. They're coming Tene, Brahma, Hida, Adikabhaya. They're coming from the Supreme Lord himself and presented by Lord Brahma. Krishna killed, there was two demons, Kaitava and Madhava, Madhu and Kaitava. And they tried to steal the Vedas, and Krishna incarnated and killed both demons and brought the Vedas back. The second time the Vedas were in jeopardy it was during this huge flood. And that's when uh, Matsya appeared, the incarnation of Krishna, Leela incarnation. And all the Vedic knowledge was placed in this huge boat and uh, pulled by the horn of this great gigantic fish who was the Supreme Lord himself in the boat along with the Vedas, with Satyavrat Muni, along with um, many, many great sages and saints. Mm -hmm. So twice we have, at least from the Shastras, we have experiences of the Vedas being threatened, but both times the Lord came to save the Vedas because without Vedic knowledge, there's no knowledge. <laughs> Um, yeah, even knowledge that we get today uh, about various subject matters are also, and what you can trace it back to the Vedas, but it's been cut off from the Vedas and given as either religious knowledge or transcendental knowledge or secular knowledge. The Vedas are vast and Veda is the authorized and Krishna explains the goal of the Vedas. He said, Vedais Chircham Aham Veda Vedyo Vedanta Krit Veda Vid Eva Chaham. I compiled the Vedas. I know the Vedas. And the Vedas are meant to know me. The conclusion of all Vedic knowledge is, is to know Krishna and to engage in the service of the Supreme Lord. The Vedas are very important. So here we have a section of the Vedas called the Puranas. Puranas means ancient histories, which are also somewhat prophetic and also very, uh, what do you say, contemporary in some of the some of the Puranic statements, especially the Padma Purana. Okay, so this is from Bhavishya Purana, again, Lord Chaitanya. And the Supreme Lord is speaking, O oh, austere sage, you should know that in every age of Kali, everyone will see my transcendental form as a sannyasi. I will be exhibiting symptoms of ecstasy like shedding tears of bliss and hair standing in ecstasy. So the Lord describes his appearance in this particular form as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and he'll be a sannyasi displaying ecstatic symptoms. And this is from the Agni Purana. And Agni Purana is more like a, a Purana in the mode of passion, but it's interesting. The Supreme Personality of Godhead will come in a golden form, Goranga, full of peace, Prashantatma, with a beautiful long neck, Labhyakanta, 
and he will be surrounded by many saintly devotees, Sura Avrita. Here, it also notes, there's a notation, this indicates the prediction of the advent of the members of the Panchatattva, surrounded by saintly devotees. Yeah. So not only Krishna Chaitanya, but the, the Panchatattva is mentioned. Here's from the Matsya Purana. In the age of Kali I shall event, Bhavishya, Kalo Yuge, where the three rivers meet, three Srotas, Tira, Sambhava, I shall have a shaven head, Manda, I shall have a golden complexion, Gora, and I'll be very kind and always chant the holy names of Krishna, Daya, Daya Lo. Kirtana Grahi. So he will meet, he'll come where the three rivers meet. And uh, the three rivers are, let's see, that is the Alakandamba, uh, was it Alakandamba? I don't know, I can't. The, the Ganges, the uh, Mm, what is that other river? He's the uh, hmm. the Ganges and the uh, mm, can't remember the other river. You can see it when you go to Mayapur. We have our uh, Tirta Kirti. Are you there today? Okay, she's not. Okay. Okay, so now another one from the Vayu Purana in the age of Kali. I shall come to Vishami Kalo Yuge in a place on the bank of the Ganga, Ganga Tira Vibhud Bhava. I will be very pure, Sudha, have a golden complexion, Gora, and be very tall, Sudhir Ganga, and chant the holy names of Krishna. So Lord Chaitanya was tall. They say he was about two meters high. <laughs> So you can uh, simply imagine a golden form that's two meters high. His long, his arms were so long that they would, his, they would, they would go down to his knees, and he would hang them down his long his body. And the Markandeya Purana it says. In Kali Yuga, I will leave Goloka and, and to save the people of the world, I will become the handsome and playful Lord Gora. So we'll get into some of his playful pastimes, which are mentioned when he was young, specifically when he was older, those things disappeared. But when he was young, he was very playful and very naughty also. Krishna was naughty and stealing butter and doing other things but lord chaitanya who is krishna himself his naughtiness was much greater <laughs> we all uh, when we see a little child who's a little naughty sometimes it's a disturbance for some and sometimes it's a source of happiness for others lord chaitanya was naughty And the Varaha Purana says, I shall come as the best of the Brahmanas. I will exhibit many pastimes in the form of a devotee. I shall deliver the people of the world. Mm -hmm. 
So he's, Lord Chaitanya, he has this desire to bring everyone back to Godhead. So as servants of Lord Chaitanya, we, we take note of his desires and uh, we think, well, he left it for us to do. So he's also given the command that we take up the process of fulfilling his desire to bring everyone back to Godhead. This is from the Vamana Purana. It says, I will take birth in the womb of Sachi. I shall save the people who will give up all proper and good conduct from the terrible darkness of the age of Kali Yuga. So this gives a little indication of what's happening. You know, we get sometimes illusioned by the fact that we have material opulence. And we think because we have material opulence, we're advanced. But in this age, people don't actually know what advanced civilization is. You can see every, everything good is practically gone. In the Vedic civilization, there were, there were ceremonies and uh, rituals and uh, what we say, celebrations for practically everything that people did. It was always done in great pomp. Nowadays, it says in years ago, you know, to actually develop cleanliness, there were many, many standards that one had to come up with. Now it says if you take a bath, you're considered to be clean. Uh, it says that in previous ages, uh, ladies would have beautiful dresses and look very big. They would also, their bodies would be formed very nicely because they were healthy and they lived a very active life. Now people look quite niggardly, sickly, skinny. Their eyes are all black around. People are really in a quite desolate state of affairs. Uh, women would wear jewelry, golden bangles, and beautiful silk garments. Now they wear jeans with cut and they have, if they have any kind of decorations, it's plastic. <laughs> and pass. Yeah, so there was, so everything has gone down. People would, then when Krishna was here, people were eating on golden plates. And once they used the plate, they would throw it. Now we have, once in a while we use metal plates, but we usually have some kind of china or glass or even paper. <laughs> so things have gone really down. So we think we have this conception that we have made advancement. But what is our advancement? Technology is not an, ex not a, not an indication of advancement. Years ago, the Brahmins, simply by chanting mantras, they could make something happen. <clears throat> they could communicate, they could fly. They could even kill a person simply by chanting mantras. That's how powerful the Brahmins were. Nowadays, you know, we, we have our iPads and iPods and computers, and we think, wow, we're so sophisticated, we're so advanced. But this kind of technology is really gross. And it is the, it's the product of, of a sutra consciousness. So uh, yeah, everything has gone down. This is the age of Kali. Next one, it says in the Vayu Purana, this one's a little long. 
I shall have been in the month of Falguna. That's usually in the month of February, March, the end of February to beginning of March. When the star Falguni is conjoined with the full moon, I shall incarnate in a golden complexion in the womb of Sachi and Puranda Mishra. I'll be born in the city of Navadvipa on the Ganges shore in a Brahmin family. I shall take the renounced order of life and show kindness to the people in general and engage them in bhakti. I will be known as Sri Krishna Chaitanya. As all of you should follow my order and deliver the people of the world, I shall appear as a Brahmin. I shall make this earth fearless. Hmm. This is interesting. He's going to make the earth fearless. Can we, we can, we see there's an atmosphere of fear everywhere, especially now, but that's for those who have no connection with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Those who have connection with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu know that simply by chanting the holy names of the Lord, one becomes Abhayam. Srila Prabhupada's name was Abhay. Bhai means fear. Bhaya. Bhaya means fear. And Abha means without fear. Abhayam means one who is one who is completely fearless. One of the qualities of a Vaishnava. Rodi has no fear because they always they're always under the care of the Supreme Lord and Mahaprabhu is very diligent to protect his devotees. <laughs> oh, this is interesting. And so that one here, this one we just read is from the Vayu Vayu Purana, really detailed description. Here's one from the Ananta Samhita. A Samhitas are also parts of the Vedas. And this one is, this one's a little long. And it says, to show mercy the, to the people and, and give them devotional service, the Supreme Lord of Godhead, the Supreme Personality of Godhead will appear in a Brahmin's home in Navadweep by the Ganga Shur. The Supreme Person, Sri Krishna himself, who is the life of Srimati Radharani, as the Lord of the universe and creation, maintenance and annihilation appears as Goda. O Maheshwara. In Kali Yuga, I will descend onto the earth with my associates. In Navadweep, which is surrounded by the Ganga, I will take birth in Sachi Devi's womb. They who are bewildered my illusionary potency will not understand the great secret of my appearance in the world of me and my personal form. And then it's listed here, one, in my form as an incarnation of devotion, two, in my form as an incarnation of a devotee, three, in my form bearing the name of a devotee, four, in my form as a devotee, and five, in my form as the giver of devotional service. This secret is not to be revealed to them. Only the saintly, pure, renounced devotees diligently engaged in my devotional service will be able to understand me in these five forms as an incarnation of devotion, devotee, name-bearing devotee, form-giving devotee, and devotional giver. My dear male and female associates, headed by Sri Diamond Subal, who came to the world at that time of my advent as Lord Krishna will come again during the Kali Yuga. The Gopas will become the 64 Mahants and 12 Gopals. Mahantas. To establish the truth of religion, I will enjoy many pastimes with them. In this way, I will again reveal the path of devotional service, which has been destroyed in the course of time. My son should also descend to earth and assume the form of devotees, and by my order also work to establish the true principles of religion. And this is last part is interesting. At this time, my names will be Krishna Chaitanya, Goranga, Gorachandra, Sachi Sutta, Mahaprabhu, Gora, 
and Gor Hari. Chanting these names will bring devotion to me. Mm -hmm. Well, that's interesting and quite lengthy. So uh, you see that there's so much information on the appearance of Lord Chaitanya. And this is from the Mahabharata, which is also mentioned in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Subarna Varna He Mango Varagas Chandana Gadi Sanyasi Kritchamam Shanto Nishta Shanti Parayanaha. In his early activities of Lord Chaitanya, he comes as a householder. He has a golden complexion. His limbs are very beautiful and are smeared with sandalwood pulp. He has appearance of molten gold. So everything golden is mentioned. <laughs> the Supreme Lord Chaitanya accepted the round order of life. He is fully sense controlled and recomposed and is completely peaceful. He's completely fixed in the chanting of the holy name of Lord Krishna. He is the highest abode of devotion and transcendental peace. He silences the Mayavadi impersonalists. So Subarna Varna means one with a golden complexion. Mm -hmm. And this is from the, the, some of the devotees who were there at the time of Lord Chaitanya, specifically. <coughs> we have uh, um, so uh, Srila Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. He was a foremost devotee in Mahaprabhu and Jagannath Kampuri. He composed an entire, entire series of prayers describing the details of the various features of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu called Sri Goranga Prati Anga Varanakya Stavaraja, or the King of Prayers, pro proclaiming the glory of each limb of Sri Goranga. Let us carefully present a few of these divine gems. So here we go. I worship Lord Krishna, the spiritual master of the universe, who appears in the age of Kali with luster like a golden body. His body is beautiful and tall. He is like golden, molten gold. He is the light and son of Sachi Devi. Srila Prabodhananda Saraswati Thakur also describes Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's golden complexion. O Lord Chaitanya Chandra, O Lord whose form is full of blissful pastimes, O Lord whose complexion is as splendid as gold. Krishna Das Kaviraj describes. The luster of his expansive body resembles molten gold. Again, from Prabodhananda Saraswati, his complexion is fair as molten gold. His loving curly locks are interwoven with creepers of glistening pearls. Prabodhananda Saraswati continues, May Lord Chaitanya, whose shoulders are like a lion, he has shoulders like a lion, the powers of a lion and the loud voice of a lion. His arm reach, his arms reach all the way down to his knees. Their arms, Chaitanya and Mahaprabhu and Lord Ityananda, reach all the way down to their knees. His two arms, glittering with bang, bra bracelets and bangles, extend down to his knees. His beautiful eyes, just like reddish lotus flowers. They are most beautiful, just like lakes of Krishna Prema. His nose is arched and is splendid, just like the sesame flower. His cheeks are round and they shine brightly. He wears jeweled earrings. He has a peacock feather placed near his left ear. So here it's indicated he's Krishna because he's wearing a peacock feather. His lips are tender and very lustrous. They resemble reddish blossoming flowers. He reveals his pearl-like teeth out of his kindness. So these are coming from many of his devotees. So the uh, the texts, they go on and on and on. We have a Tarva Purana, Tarva Veda, Samaveda. 
Yeah, this is interesting because even in the Vedas itself, it's mentioned in his periods. So those who have any doubts, sometimes they say, well, we don't accept Shmiti, we don't accept Puranas, we only accept the Vedas. So here we have the Atharva Veda, Samaveda, and the Chandogya Upanishads, all are Sweta Sotara Upanishads. These are all known, Shaitanya Upanishads. These are all known as the Vedas. When um, Prabhupada was asked, does Lord Chaitanya appear in every day of Lord Brahma? Just like the original personality of Krishna does appear once in every day of Lord Brahma. Prabhupada answered, this was in Melbourne, Australia. And then he, he explained that, that uh, the Lord would come to his planet again in his personal form after 8 billion 600 million years. So this all goes on. So, okay, we'll conclude here with some more uh, relevant uh, Shastric information, um, the beautiful Gauranga Mahaprabhu. As Krishna is a very beautiful, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu exhibited a beauty also that was very attractive because he had the he had the internal mood of Radharani in her color, and he had the nature of Krishna. interesting combination and appearing only a little bit more than 500 years ago okay so if there's anyone who would like to comment you don't have you sh don't have to worry about limiting your comments to just what we covered today you can ask questions about anything Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for um, uh, actually uh, talking about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu from various Puranas. It's actually give different perspective and it was very sweet listening. It just the wordings were very, very sweet. Um, so devotees, if you have any questions, please unmute yourself and ask questions. Uh, uh, Guru Maharaj, just before we go for the questions, uh, uh, Shidevi Mataji has uh, mentioned the name of the river, uh, which we uh, were uh, talking about is Jalangi. Janavi? Jalangi. Jalangi. No, there's there's no such word as Janagi. Jalangi. 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 Yeah, Jalangi. Yes. <laughs> Jalangi. Jalangi. Not Jalangi. Not Jalangi. 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 Yes, maybe. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, no. Jalangi. Try again. Jalang. Jalangi. No, Jalangi. Jalangi. Say it all together. Jalangi. Jalangi. No, Jalangi. No, um... <laughs> Do you want me to try? Jalangi. Jalangi. There you go. Not Jalangi, <laughs> but Jalangi. Jalangi. Okay, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Devotees, Vivek Prabhu, you have a hand up. You can ask your question. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. Um, Maharaj, I have one question uh, related to, not like maybe directly to the class, but like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, whatever he did, of course, every activity is his leela. 
but one thing from our like uh, from my perspective i could not understand uh, why he took sanyas from keshav bharti like not from his first of all uh, ishwapuri maharaj and second like i was reading somewhere that he was not even in the vaishnav sampradaya so what example he wanted to set because that definitely some that was the climate at the time that's how proper is so that was the climate at the time the mayavadi sanyasis were very very profuse and so he stated at sampradaya and then i mentioned that he did that so he could preach to the mayavadis also and he did he converted the mayavadis from varanasi we know it as banaris now and the 60000 mayavadis led by prakasananda saraswati and so he did that one to respect the climate at the time and two which was more important to convert all these mayavadis into vaishnavas and he did 60000 thank you guru maharaj thank you is that okay yes yes i was definitely like uh, missing this point i was sure that there will be some leela here behind this it cannot be just something so thank you guru maharaj yeah it's you yeah, he uh, inspired lord dityananda to get married to preach the grihastas and he took sanyas from the mayavadi to preach to the mayavadi sanyasis otherwise they wouldn't listen he was one of them thank you guru maharaj thank you very much hari krishna mm -hmm. well when he was carrying his ekadanda because the because the mayavadis carry an ekadanda one rod the vaishnavas carry three danda three rods and uh, so when mm, he gave it to lord nityananda to carry and lord nityananda broke it in three places and threw it in a river <laughs> just to make a point <laughs> great i think he did that uh, guru maharaj that in puri this breaking of they were well, they were on their way to puri yeah. just before he reached jagannath puri yeah is a river it's called bangi nadi something banga nadi ganga something like that the river got named after the tridanda or chaitanya banga nadi river i think it is thank you guru maharaj hari krishna Krishna Guru Maharaj, uh, I have a question. Uh, as in, uh, you mentioned that uh, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to deliver us all, and he wanted uh, like us all to help him in this mission. So I wanted to ask, like, who has the potency to deliver others? As in, uh, one who is really pure can deliver others, but uh, like other. like for example if i can talk about myself i can only you know help the mission but delivering is uh, very different than helping you know others to progress so what is the difference and how it can be actually done is spread the holy name the same instruction he gave to the uh, kurma brahma he was a householder he told him he said uh, by my command be guru save the land wherever you meet tell them about krishna wherever you meet uh, and, and encourage them to chant hari krishna that was a that was a uh, 
instruction for everyone, but specifically for the householders, because the householders can't go anywhere. They stay within their household. So that was, uh, well, that's there, the direct instruction. Whoever you meet, tell them about Krishna. Whatever you know about Krishna, you can say something. And you can also encourage people to chant. That's all. If you can do that, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's a very important instruction. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. But in that, I just always feel that you can tell, like, I, I've been telling my parents to start chanting, and my father is like, before he used to say that he will chant in 2020, then 2025, and he just, every time he increased, like, time by four or five years and uh, now he has started doing two rounds but I just hope that you know I feel like the mercy has to come from the Lord himself so that you know living entities will realize themselves the importance of chanting uh, like we can say as much as like like I can influence my family as much as I can but it's just the mercy has to flow from the Lord himself yeah, but if you show mercy to someone, Krishna will show mercy also. Okay. If you don't do anything, then, then the Lord may not recognize that. So because you're a devotee and you're showing mercy to someone, Krishna will reciprocate by giving that person mercy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. This is useful. Hopefully, if one considers themselves as a devotee, yes, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And I have one more question, Guru Maharaj, because you mentioned <laughs> our one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I have a perfect name for you when you get initiated. You're going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting to hear that too, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. It fits your character just 100%. <laughs> oh, God. I have almost, a question, Guru. Sorry. <laughs> I'm almost inclined to say it now, but I won't because it's not... not <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll get initiated right now then, <laughs> Guru Maharaj. <laughs> <laughs> We have such an amazing association, like all of the God families here. But no, I would like to do it face to face, Guru Maharaj. So I had a question. Sorry, I'm I'm really thinking. Uh, you mentioned that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was as naughty as Krishna, but uh, See, I, like, I don't like. I don't consider this. I don't consider. <laughs> You're much naughtier than Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Your voice is, or oh, maybe I can't hear it. Are you well? Are you well? Yes, I can hear you, Guru Maharaj. Sorry. Okay. Baby is laughing. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So, go ahead. And give me one of those questions that you usually give me. So, just my question was uh, you mentioned like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was, you know, same naughty as Krishna. But uh, I have not heard of many of pastimes when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his young age, in his childhood was very not naughty. <laughs> oh, sorry, I did not say that. <laughs> Shri Devi Mataji saying, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I missed that part. <laughs> Krishna's arrangement for you to miss it. <laughs> oh, Krishna, oh, really? Yeah. Um, yeah, well, 
that's there. <laughs> it's there. I'll I'll spend one day just talking about his naughty pastimes. Oh, that'll be very nice. That'll be really interesting to hear that, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. That's fine then. I will give other devotees <laughs> chance to ask questions. Then you can learn some more tricks on how to become more naughtier. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, because you're following in the footsteps of Lord Chaitanya, so that's good. <laughs> I wish I could do something properly and really spread the holy name. I really wish, Guru Maharaj, by your blessings, we all can do it. <laughs> Sri Devi, she's, she also knows how to become very naughty. <laughs> That's why she's so excited to let you know how naughty you are. <laughs> oh, thank you, Guru Maharaj. You made us all laugh. You made me laugh, actually. You made my day. Thank you. <laughs> Very sweet. I just cannot help laughing. This, this is so wonderful. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely wonderful sometimes. <laughs> anyway, it's, uh, it's one of the characteristics of devotees is that they're naughty. <laughs> It's not mentioned as one of the 26 qualities of a Vaishnava. <laughs> Here comes another naughty person, Janava. <laughs> She's very naughty. <laughs> okay, devotees, you can ask your questions. Sorry for taking your time. I've taken so much time. Sorry. <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri Prabhupada, all glories to you, Maharaj. Um, uh, Lavanya Mataji asked a very wonderful question because I also used to, I also think many times that when I'm trying to inspire um, uh, people and when they respond after four years, five years, I always wonder that um, obviously it is done with the mercy of the Lord, but it's very hard to understand if it is their sukriti or, you know, it's that you have inspired them or it's the mercy that has come from somewhere. So it helped when you said that um, because we initiate it, then Krishna sees them. Krishna is, that's how, you know, because we are basically initiating it. That's how the mercy is also flowing. There can be other reasons, but that's also one of the reasons. Yeah, yeah, and due course of time, and there's preaching or anything in devotional service is beneficial. Mm. Whether it's immediately beneficial or it has beneficial effects in the future, it will always be beneficial. Anything done in devotional service. So mm. in terms of preaching, sometimes it's just planting the seed. Oh, you, you're not getting any any flower, not even seeing a creeper grow, but you're planting a seed. And that seed may will be watered by the different events that they experience in their life. <laughs> hmm. and, and sometimes we see, we, we, we see that when people have some calamity in life, and then they start to remember what they had heard from somebody who was giving some advice. Calamities have a way of waking people up. <laughs> so Maharaj, I'm just wondering that preaching is such a subtle activity and many times we don't see difference in us, in others, for years together but 
you know, it is so subtle. Something is changing, something is developing, mm. but it's not like, you know, earning money that, oh, I went for work for a month and at the end of the month, I can physically see something. So that's why sometimes, you know, it's not as encouraging preaching or devotional activities, but um, things do change. Bhakti Siddhartha, Bhakti Siddhartha gave us the formula. He said, if, if you are preaching and nobody comes, you preach to the four walls. Mm. He, <laughs> said because, he said, because our business, that's our business. So we do our business and the results are not up to us. You know, I went to one prison. They had asked me to come. And when I got there, nobody showed up for the class. <laughs> It was just mm. me and the devotees who came. But it was the person who organized the thing. He came, but none of the inmates came. They had a choice to come or not, and they didn't come. So I just I just spoke to the, uh, the person who organized it. <laughs> we had a, and then he became interested just by, you know, because he was there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, so this is very wonderful, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Uh, Lavanya Mataji asked a very nice question. I didn't, I would have not, I, I, even though I wonder about this many times, it, been, it doesn't come to me when I'm hearing the classes from you. And you gave such a wonderful um, insight into, into this topic. Um, I have a small technical question that when we talk about the Matsya Avtar and um, the Vedas were saved, it just came to my mind because I've not read that pastime myself in full detail. I've always heard the lectures on that. So my question is that um, in uh, Matsya Avtar was obviously in Satyuga. And I have always heard that the Vedas is, um, were transferred orally. So how come they were saved? Were they saved in the physical form? Or can you give some clarification on that? Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, it seems appear to be, appear to be a, a contradiction. Um, it mentions that the Brahmanas who were versed in the Vedas were in the boat. Oh. No. So it might have been the, the instrument by which the Vedas were say uh, were say was the Brahmanas, right? When you read the pastime, it appears that the the Vedas were, you know, but you know, originally hmm. things were written down, but they were never communicated. It's not like we had book publishing programs. There was always like an original of everything. So you might say there was, you know, everything was written down in one copy and then it was preserved in a certain, that's just philosophical speculation, I'm not sure. But then again, it says the Vedas are in the boat, so. Mm. In the, it's the last chapter of the uh, eighth canto, Matsya Avatar, if you just turn to that and read, you'll you'll see towards the end of the pastime, it mentions how the Vedas were saved. Mm. Okay, in the, in the last canto. Uh, eighth canto. Oh, eighth canto, okay. Last chapter. Last chapter, okay, sure. Yeah, this is, um, uh, but even in, in principle, it's a, it's still very, very good clarification that either physical or in the form of the Brahmanas, but in essence, Vedas were um, saved through whatever mode was used at that time for the transfer of knowledge. Yeah, I'm going to go see if I can find something that will support saying here. Uh, I'm going to go to my notes for the eighth canto, last chapter, and see what I can find here. What, what I wrote down towards the end of the eighth canto. Mm -hmm. so let me see here. Uh, 
let's see, I'm just going to my notes, not to the book itself. Uh, Okay, let me see here. Yeah, it says that, you know, it said that at the end of the last inundation, the Supreme Personality of Gaia killed the demon high agree and delivered all the Vedic literatures to Lord Brahma when Lord Brahma awakened from sleep. Mm -hmm. So it says, you know, at that time, it appears that what he delivered all, it says, delivered all the Vedic literatures to Lord Brahma. Lord did himself. Hmm. It's interesting. Yeah. It says here, King Satyavrata was illuminated with all Vedic knowledge by the mercy of the Lord. Lord. And then he was taking, he took birth later on as Vaivishata Manu, and then that in another Manu appearance. Yeah, it doesn't really. At least in my notes, I can't find anything that indicates literature, although the word literature is in one of the verses. <clears throat> it seems like there were books, but that wasn't the means for, for getting knowledge. That's the way, that's the way it sounds. Okay. That's fine, Maharaj. Um, I'm satisfied because, you know, in a sense, um, this is also very, very relevant that the Brahmanas were saved who knew the knowledge. So um, it's satisfactory to me. Okay, yeah. You can read more if you like. It's an interesting pastime. <laughs> Yes, sure. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your question. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Your Holiness. Thank you for another wonderful lecture today uh, about beautiful Lord Chaitanya and his molten gold complexion. Was just so enlightening just to listen to those descriptions. My question actually is a little different though. I'm asking about the Vedas having all the knowledge and as you were describing the pastime of Matsya Avatar coming and saving the Vedas, my mind went to some pastimes described in the Christian literature like Noah's Ark and you know the things in the Bible. Is the Bible also coming from the Vedas and yeah. then, yep, yeah. Prabhupada said, yeah. So these explanations of Noah's Ark and Garden of the Eden. You know, the word Veda means knowledge. That's what the word means. Veda means knowledge. All knowledge is coming from Vedic sources. Tele Brahma Gita, Anikabuye. So 
So then how these descriptions of Garden of Eden and Adam and Eve and Noah's Ark and he built a great big ark and you know, flood waters were coming. All these are to be believed as uh, true. <laughs> uh, I'm not an expert in Christian theology, so I'm not sure. <laughs> You know, you're, you're you're dealing with something you can't even. It's like a gigantic mountain, and you can't even begin to figure out where to start. You know, I will not try to correlate. Prabhupada Prabhup was asked the same question. He, he said, "I will not try to." you know, balance what the Vedas say and what the Christian books say. He said, that's not our business. Okay. Um, that's the same question you asked, you asked was asked to Prabhupada. Because people like to cor correlate the different scriptures with similar statements. Prabhupada said, that's not our business. Just accept it as it is. That's it. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied with that answer. That's uh, acceptable. I just wanted to know what is the right thing to think and how to accept it. So thank you, Guru Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, okay, so, yeah. yeah, go ahead. <laughs> No, I was just saying, Guru Maharaj, that yes, uh, should we close the call? We have um, 15 minutes, uh, like um, more than an hour. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> okay, yeah, we can end here if there's no more questions. Okay, thank you, Madhusi Ganga. We're going to try to, uh, we're going to move into more, we're going to do bhajans by Lord, about Lord Chaitanya. We're going to do uh, pastimes we're going to do a lot of the vedic evidences heralding his and then in the last week we'll we'll do pastimes leading up to his appearance so. there is a question guru maharaj from mansi ganga mataji would you like to answer should i read it out is a question or a comment uh, it's a question guru maharaj she has two questions okay yeah. So she's saying, please accept my humble obeisances. Thank you for this wonderful series of Lord Chaitanya. My two questions are about the pastimes mentioned yesterday of Krishna telling uh, Radharani that he will advance and how she was how she was worried, thus giving him the protection of her color. Why is that so? He is the Lord Himself. His body is all spiritual. <laughs> The Lord always takes help from his devotees. That's the way he does things. He allows his devotees to serve him. He becomes the child of his mother and he cries and she has to feed him. <laughs> you think he can't feed himself? <laughs> he, take, he's, he becomes a submissive, uh, you know, puppet in the hands of the loving devotees. So he, he accepts their service. Is like a little, like a father, like a, like, like a little kid will run up to the father and say, here, daddy, here's, here's a, here's a lollipop. It was a God, father, he can, get, he can get so many lollipops. But because it's done with love, he accepts. That's good. That's complete. That's completely Leela. That's just a loving relation, loving exchange. It's not like he's in need. <laughs> and if he doesn't get it from Radharani, he doesn't get it at all. <laughs> it's just, you know, he's accepting her, her, sin, her love in the form of the, her offering, her concern for him.
Krishna is a lovable person and he accepts, even though he doesn't need anything, he, he puts himself in a position of being in need so he can exchange love with his devotees. <coughs> If he was Thank just, you, if he's just big, powerful God, and you can't do anything for him, you know, <laughs> what's the use of our relationship? But he becomes so sweet, you know. He, he plays with his coward friends, and they beat him in wrestling, you know. <laughs> so. Thank you. You understand the principle? Yes, yes. Um, it's Leela. Yeah, it's just Leela. Leela, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, Guru Maharaj. There is one more question from Roberto Prabhu. Uh, and uh, he's asking, Dear Maharaj, if we don't see the results of our preaching, uh, but we feel we satisfied Krishna, Krishna, this is success. Is this a success? Prabhupada said, if, if Krishna is satisfied, you feel satisfied. Because you're connected to Krishna. So if you do something and there's satisfaction and it comes by way of your activity, that means Krishna was satisfied. Roberto Prabhu, do you have any other question? Are you okay with the answer? It doesn't mean because you're satisfied, Krishna is satisfied. It means that because if you do something to, for Krishna, and there's a feeling of satisfaction that comes from that, that means Krishna was satisfied. It doesn't mean like if I go out and have a good time with my friends and I feel happy, that means Krishna's happy. That does no, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> there was one yogi, he was preaching like that. Prabhupada slammed him. You know, <clears throat> if you want to get intoxicated and, and you have fun because of that, and Krishna Krishna is satisfied too. No, it's not like that. If you, it's in devotional service, if there's some service rendered and you feel satisfied by the service rendered, only by the service rendered, then that means Krishna was satisfied or pleased. That's not artificial, nor is it applied to anything else but devotional service. Okay, I think that's, so, uh, yep. Jai Anjali. Jai Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for your valuable time and association. We just, we have no words to say thank you from last one and a half year, almost. Almost a year you have been uh, every day coming online and giving your darshan and association. Like, we feel like we are the most fortunate disciples and devotees in this moment. Your association has been so valuable, Guru Maharaj. Thank you ever so much. Just trying to satisfy Srila Prabhupada. If Prabhupada wants us, he wants everyone to become Krishna conscious. So we try to do that. It's Prabhupada's mercy that comes through. And of course, Prabhupada's mercy is Krishna's mercy. The Prabhupada's mercy has an extra element that's not there in Krishna's mercy. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Jai. Ananta Koti Vaishnavrinda ki jai. Shila Prabhupada ki jai. Guru Maharaj ki jai. Jai Anjali ki jai. Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj Hare Krishna. 
मनसे गंगा की जाए रेवती कंदाल कंदवाली की जाए थैंक यू महाराज थैंक यू